I don't give out personal information to others. Saying that, my mom friend, who I got along with, betrayed me. So I decided to move into a luxury condo next to hers. Why are you here? With a smile, I told her the reason. <gasps> who are you? I'm Emily Norris, and I'm 35 years old. I got married, gave birth to my daughter, Caitlin, then divorced shortly after due to my husband's infidelity. I decided to raise my daughter properly by myself. Originally, I worked as a reasonably well-known real estate agent, so I didn't struggle financially. To avoid causing difficulties for my daughter, I had to work hard. Thinking like that, I became independent over time. And when my daughter turned three, she entered kindergarten. My daughter, who was not shy, quickly adjusted to kindergarten and even made a good friend, a girl named Madison Stevens. Through our daughter's connection, I met a mom named Regina Stevens. She was a single mother like me, but recently got remarried. I heard from her that her second husband is from a good family and is wealthy. Recently, I had heard rumors about her moving, but since she hadn't mentioned it herself, I thought it was just gossip. After remarrying, she started wearing branded clothes, and her kindergarten drops-offs and pickups were in a shiny luxury car. I used to think people could only change so much, but one day, I found out the real side of that mom friend. Good morning! Are you working today, Emily? I always admired women who work. My husband says I don't need to work since he earns quite well, she said with a shy smile. Since seeing her true colors, I couldn't shake off what I learned from a mom friend I met recently. She had ridiculed me as a poor single mother. While I am a single mother, I never considered myself poor. It feels bad when someone I thought was a close mom friend talks about me behind my back in places I don't know. After hearing that, I started to keep my distance from her. I usually don't care about such petty gossip. Still being betrayed by someone I thought was a good friend, despite us both being single mothers, made me realize how people can change, and it saddened me a bit. I gave a wry smile and nodded as such a mom friend. That brand? Are their clothes popular? Lately everyone seems to be wearing them, right? I might try buying some too, but if I wore it, it would look like a very expensive brand. Since learning her true nature, every word of hers bothers me. It all sounds like sarcasm. I don't want to feel this way, but since we attend the same kindergarten and do the same school runs with our daughters every day, I can't avoid seeing her. I wish I could just dismiss it as paranoia, but she always smirks at me, finding it amusing, which unsettles me. Lately, you've been cold, Emily. Did I do something wrong? Are you maybe jealous because I got married? It's okay. You're really cool too, Emily. You'll find someone soon too. Oh, I know. How about we arrange a mixer through my husband's connections? He works for a famous company, so his credentials are flawless. To such brazen suggestions from my mom friend, I replied with vague responses. It didn't sit well with me. I felt like I was being looked down upon not even in such dire straits that I need my mom and friend's concern. How nice would it be to tell her to mind her own business? Despite how things are now, we've known each other since our daughters started kindergarten and haven't been fairly close, so I can't just say such cold words to her. <sighs> Thank you for your concern. I've just been a bit tired from work lately, so I'll take my leave now. I said this and leaving was all I could manage. One day I heard from my mom friends that she had moved. The party was apparently held at a luxury condo surrounded by other high-rise buildings in the city. Since I wasn't invited, my mom friends asked why I didn't come. I had no idea. When did she move? When I asked this, my mom friends looked uncomfortable, briefly answered, and then quickly tried to change the subject. Just then she appeared. As usual, she stepped out of her luxury car, dressed in designer clothes. With a daring smile, she naturally joined our group. What on earth are you all talking about? I heard you moved. The others told me. I didn't know at all. Apparently, you also had a housewarming party. When I said that, she brushed it off lightly with, 
Oh, that. I'm sorry, I thought I had contacted you, Emily. I'm such a scatterbrain. The party was a lot of fun. Emily, you haven't been in a luxury condo, have you? I really wanted you to come. Oh, no, no. Oh, by the way, I want to send a housewarming gift, too, so can you give me your address? When I said that, she snorted and gave a sneering smile. I don't share personal information with others. I was taken aback by her words. When I said, what? In a raspy voice, she smirked and started giving a flimsy excuse. My husband respects security and privacy. The reason we moved to a luxury condo is because of the good security. Uh, I see. Well, I'll bring a housewarming gift to the kindergarten next time. Oh, you don't have to do that. After all, you're a single mother, right? I understand how tough it is. I was a single mother, too. I wouldn't want you to go out of your way for me. Besides, my husband only eats gourmet food, so it wouldn't be worth it. She looked at me as she said this. At that moment, I realized something. Since getting married, she had been mocking me all along. I had suspected it, but I didn't want to believe that her daily remarks were actually insults. But now, with such blatant nastiness, I couldn't stay silent. We live in different worlds now, but let's stay friends, okay? She said this with a smug smile, and even the other moms around us were slightly taken aback by her words. I felt deeply humiliated. Her current good life was thanks to her husband's earnings, not her own. Why should I be mocked by someone like that? From that day on, she completely looked down on me. The argument between us quickly became gossip among the other moms. Whether she added fuel to the fire or not, the moms gradually distanced themselves from me. I found myself completely isolated. Several days passed after I distanced myself from the other moms. There was going to be an event at the kindergarten, but I was too busy with work to participate. Given the recent incident with the moms, I thought I might ask my daughter to be patient this time. That night, I received a message in the mom friends group chat. Emily, about the upcoming kindergarten event, I just got my nails done, so can you help set up the tent? It was from her. Using the flimsy excuse of having just gotten her nails done, she wanted to push the physical labor onto me. I replied that I was too busy with work to attend, but she wouldn't let it go. She sent a private message to me. You can manage a day off work, right? My husband is busy too, but he takes time off for family events. You wouldn't understand because you can't afford to get your nails done, but they're really delicate, you know. Setting up a tent would ruin them. Besides, you've been absent from the mom meetings lately. The other moms are worried about you. Her baseless claims were infuriating. Who did she think was responsible for this situation? I was deeply offended by her blatant mockery. I may not usually care much about my appearance and don't get my nails done, but I have had them done once before. She assumed I was a poor single mother and couldn't imagine me getting my nails done. I started thinking about how to retaliate against her. And then I had an idea. Some might say it's extreme, but I couldn't stand her daily insults any longer. I was also looking for a change of pace. Caitlin, do you have a moment? What is it? When I told my daughter my plan, she happily exclaimed, Yay, I'm excited! Then I sent a message to her. Sorry, I've been really busy with work and I'm actually moving soon. I have to pack, so I really can't participate this time. There was no reply from her. She was probably looking for another mom to burden. I was secretly pleased. Just wait and see, I thought, and immediately took action. A few days later, I easily found out where she had moved. As a result, I noticed something interesting. So I headed to the same luxury condo. It's always so big. Like a castle. My daughter and I smiled at each other and entered the building. Since the movers had already delivered our belongings, we were traveling light. As we stood at the entrance, a familiar face approached. Her subtle, shiny jewelry reflected the fluorescent light. Her glossy hair with its gentle waves gave her an air of wealth. I gave a slight nod. Hello, Regina. When I said that, she widened her eyes in surprise, doing a double take. Wh why are you here? 
I told her, what a coincidence. I just moved here, with a smile. Her eyes widened even more, clearly shocked. There's no way you, supposedly a single mother living in poverty, could afford to move into this luxurious condo in the heart of the city. She said that, sneering at me, but I... I have an appointment today, I said, and walked past her into the building. I suppressed the urge to laugh at her mocking gaze behind my back. My first strategy was to move to a higher class condo than hers. But that was just the beginning. There was much more she would come to realize. The next day, when I went to drop off my daughter at kindergarten, I was immediately surrounded by the moms. I heard from Regina that Emily moved to the neighboring high-class apartment, but that's a lie, right? As expected, that's what the moms are curious about, isn't it? She behaved exactly as I expected, and inwardly, I was surprised at how smoothly things were going. Unaware of my feelings, the moms looked at me with a mix of disbelief and curiosity. People said you were pretending and living beyond your means, but are you really okay living in such a luxury condo? The mom friends had assumed I was poor based on her stories. I told these moms the truth. <laughs> Don't worry, it's unnecessary, because it's a building that I own. So Regina lives in the luxury condo next door, right? That place is also one of the buildings I own. What a coincidence, isn't it? The moms were gasping in surprise at my words, and I couldn't help but find it amusing to see their surprised faces. Oh, I see. We didn't know, so we just assumed. I'm sorry for asking unnecessary questions. The moms said that and left with embarrassed expressions. That same day, my phone rang, which was unusual. Of course I knew who it was. Regina, is everything all right? As I relaxed, looking out the window at the scenery, her voice sounded flustered. So, you're saying you own this luxury condo, huh? You even said the high-class luxury condo next door is yours, too? I don't know if you're trying to compete with me or what, but I don't think that's a good idea. She chuckled as she said that. To convey my composure, I told her, it's not a lie. Well then, why don't you gather the mom friends at the new condo you just moved into for our house party this weekend? That way the truth will come out. I'll spread the word to our mom friends for you. If you don't hold the party, consider yourself unwelcome starting next week. She hung up after saying such presumptuous things. I was troubled, but she immediately sent a message to the mom group chat. It stated that a house party would be held at my house. As I wrote to ask for more details, I received word from several moms that they wanted to congratulate me. It's not a bad idea to express gratitude to the moms who have been supporting me, despite the fact that I'm always busy with work and haven't been able to participate in many events. With that in mind, I shared detailed information about the house party with everyone. On the Monday following the weekend, when I went to pick up my child from kindergarten in the evening, some moms were gathered happily chatting. When I greeted them there, everyone turned around with smiles, thanking me for the previous party and praising the luxury condo where I had moved. She was also there. I heard about the house party. Why wasn't I the one who suggested it invited? I've been waiting for a response, but since no contact came, I thought the party wasn't happening. She screamed hysterically, glaring at me with a flushed face. I have been waiting for this moment. To her, I responded with a broad smile. Oh, I'm sorry, but I have a principle of not sharing personal information with others. That's why I haven't revealed my identity either. I returned her words exactly as she had spoken them. As she turned pale, I avoided her and walked straight to my daughter's classroom. From behind, she grabbed my wrist. Wait! I won't let you through until you explain. She persisted, so I said, I'll give you a brief explanation, and turned to face her. I work in real estate. I've been working since I was young, and I've been independent since my divorce. I'm proud to say I earn more than an average household. So my daughter and I have never faced financial difficulties, and I've been investing in real estate since long ago. Besides that luxury condo, I own several others in the city center. When I said this, and we locked eyes, her expression showed disbelief. Feeling amused, I couldn't help but smile. At that, she turned red, seemingly thinking I was mocking her, and glared at me. 
Why didn't you tell me about this all along? You never mentioned anything like this when I was a single mother. I thought we were both struggling in poverty. I didn't mention it because it sounded like boasting. Besides, being a single mother hasn't changed. I've wanted to say this for a long time. I was really happy when I heard that you got married. Oh, that's right. Congratulations are unnecessary. I didn't celebrate your move either, so... When I tell her so, she slumps down and looks pale. Also, I know that you have spoken ill of me. You said we'll continue to be friends, but you won't tell me where you live or let me celebrate. I can't get along with you like that. But my daughter gets along well with your child, so let's be superficially friendly, shall we? After I said this, she weakly called out to me. Uh, wait! But I didn't turn back. I had no intention of becoming close with her anymore, and seeing her frustrated face gave me a sense of satisfaction. After that, we exchanged greetings superficially, but didn't speak further, and she eventually moved out of that luxury condo. Apparently, her husband's company went bankrupt. Her husband, who seemed to be involved in shady dealings, was the type to cause a stir when exposed. After leaving the luxury condo, they apparently lived modestly, with help from her husband's family. It's no longer my concern, so I rarely bring up her topic. Perhaps the other moms were considerate, as we never ended up being assigned to the same tasks at events. By the time our daughters entered elementary school, she got divorced. It seems her proud husband was caught cheating. The rumors spread quickly, and she felt uncomfortable at the school. I heard she demanded alimony, but ended up back in a single-parent household. It seems she's struggling to find a job, as she lacks notable qualifications for full-time employment. She used to mock me without reason, but now it's unclear who's really miserable. While enjoying peaceful days on the top floor of the luxury condo watching over my daughter's growth, I've been spending my days happily. Recently, I've been getting along well with a man I met through work, and we've been visiting each other's homes often. My daughter seems to like him. And while it's early to say, she's already started calling him dad. And I'm cherishing this happiness.